Uh, we're going to take a few minutes to pray for pastors and to pray for local churches. You know, this has probably been one of the most unprecedented times for local churches um, throughout the nation. I don't think that we've ever seen a day like today. And I think really, honestly, if we look at it from the perspective of what the enemy was trying to do and then understand that God got in the middle of what the enemy was trying to do and busted the enemy's plans up and turned that which the enemy thought would cause evil and turn it for good. But I think the enemy thought at the beginning of this season, I think he thought his first step would be to destroy the corporate prayer covering over nations by keeping the people from meeting. And if he could destroy even the week-to-week -week prayer that was going on within the churches, he could come in and he could do anything with a nation. But thank God we have pastors and senior leaders of congregations all over this country who have made a stand for righteousness and who have upped the ante of prayer and are busting out in this incredible season. And I just believe that the church's greatest hour is at hand. Amen. And so we're going to hear from a few of the pastors and we're going to be praying. How many senior leaders of congregations are here today? Wonderful. Look around this room. Amen. Let's just get start out by giving them a hand. Amen. <laughs> Um, my name is Jennifer Ivez. I'm from Harvest Church in Turlock, California. My husband and I, we've been pastoring for uh, close to 25 years. As We got married and I just stepped right into ministry. And um, so that was uh, exciting. Our church was uh, about 80 years old at the time, literally 80 years old. And we just went through, in, in the beginning, we went through uh, war after war after war. And now we're in a very, very, very nice place. Hallelujah. 25 years, you know, all the problems now are our problems, so it's, you know, so anyway, and, um, but anyway, before, I just want to give you a little brief thing, um, uh, I, I think this will encourage you, it's not really what my point is, but I think it'll encourage you, it's some, keying off of something Jane said this morning, and it was about uh, Nashville, and she was talking about the, you were, you're discerning here, well, you were articulating this point of discernment, and I was actually experiencing it, and she articulated it. I'm like, thank God, you know, she's articulating it. And I, I, it landed, the journey landed in my head, um, and I kept having this vision of, of like 20, 30 times, and I'm not exaggerating, of me seeing this giant python, this white python, giant, giant white python, and me, suddenly there's this chainsaw in my hand, and then I'm slicing this python like butter. <laughs> I'm just slicing this thing like butter, you know? And and I just want to encourage you that the Lord will always weaponize you. Yeah. He will weaponize you. And so being in ministry for 25 years, um, I'm a like full full blooded prophet. My husband's a full blooded apostle. And so being in ministry for 25 years, we started off with two tensions. The tension was this. It was a supernatural culture and a leadership culture because some churches, they're supernatural, but they have no structure. And so they never grow. And so then you have a full-blown full leadership, you know, systems and structures and all of that. And then we have no supernatural. Okay. So this is the blend that my husband and I have been in this tension, uh, you know, in a good way. We've been in this tension, you know, this entire time and trying to figure out how do we have a growing church uh, um, a growing church that is supernaturally oriented where the prophetic flows and yet there are structures and all of that and so I hate timers my husband loves timers uh, you know because he can get the people out and get the next crowd in you know what I'm saying that's how he thinks and I'm like kick out the time the Holy Spirit's moving honey you know and it's just a thing and so now we come into this COVID season and we're about ready to enter into a new tension a tension that we've already been working through but I want to bring this out to you because I just know that whatever's happening many times what's happening between my husband and I seems to be like it's all across the board and so this is the tension that we have been already working out, and yet we're about ready to go into a whole new level. And the tension is, and we, you know, it wasn't a, a it wasn't a pretty thing at first, to be honest with you. We've been working this thing out, and we're at a good place now. But it was the tension between the regional and the global. The regional and the global, because we have regional assignments, since we're dealing with global stuff. That changes the conversation. And we've been already kind of working this thing out, and I'm just kind of like, hey, we've been we've been like preparing for what for what we're about ready to tip into that we've got regional assignments, but we have to consider the global on everything we do. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? And so, so the thing is, with that, we've been. Uh, I just came out of a, a conference, and one of the things 
I knew my assignment at that conference, at that church, that regionally assigned church, that local church, is I needed to activate them in the seer anointing so they can see past the, the, it's, it's almost like this this dark space that we're in. It's almost like as long as we stick to our instruments, the Bible, the written word of God, we, it is a lamp to our feet, a light to our path, and we will get where we need to go. But getting to the other side of it, people can't seem to see on the other side. And I said, that's because you don't even know what it's going to look like. We have no paradigm for it, and we have to be seers to be able to see the new thing, the change, and, and work through the tension, the new tension that's in our midst right now. We can't just think about our own world. We have to think outside of our world. We have to think about, you know, what's going on all throughout the nations, and and because it affects us. I mean, na national things are shut. Uh, international things are shutting us down. Yeah. And so, getting people to see past the little world that we've always kind of been comfortable with, and it was okay up until now. Right. And so, we begin to activate that seer anointing. Activate that seer anointing, but on the premise of Joshua chapter 3, verse 4, we haven't passed this way before. Wow. And so I had this, this dream at, in January, and it was this dream where I was running through this uh, international terminal in an airport, and I was late for my flight like usual, and I was running really hard, and I got up to the double doors, and they were sealed, and the Af African-American lady at the counter, she says, it opens with a password, and that password is Mufat. And I said, okay. And I looked at the double doors and I said, Mabat. <laughs> and the double doors opened. And I knew it was an African word, but I didn't know what it, what it meant. And I Googled it and it's an island off of Madagascar and it means lethal. And then the Lord said, you're getting ready for an endurance race. And then I found out it's an actual shoe. My thought, I'm a runner. The Lord speaks to me. Where's uh, James? He speaks to me in, in running terms. It's an actual shoe for the African 100 mile race. And he says, you're getting ready for an endurance race. And he started talking about making sure that you remain lethal. Get out your chain, get, get out your chainsaw. Get out your chainsaw, okay? Get ready, okay? And so, so he started talking to me about the, the lethal run, the endurance run, and then I'll land it with this. Is that I'm less than a minute. He started, and then, and then just kind of through this journey of different words and different things through this whole journey. Um, uh, then uh, in, in August, I was in Georgia with you. In August, he, he started talking to me about the second win. And he says he's releasing the second win. In runner's terms, you know what that means. That means I am so tired, I cannot run anymore. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, he got it again. Yeah, come on, we receive that. And so he's releasing. His church is going to get over this thing, and his church is going to get get if it's not already, but it's going to remain and increase and be lethal. Yeah, Jesus. Amen. All right. Okay. And and he's releasing the eyes to see what's on the other side because we haven't been that way before. But he will not be. He will not be what. Uh, the Lord will not be defeated. He sits in the heavens and laughs. And he's God. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a shout.